Greetings. Today we're going to learn how to clean a Stay Right Mod Media filter. Here we have some contact information. Should you have any questions during the process, feel free to contact us. And remember, should you not want to do the service yourself, we do offer such services performed on site. First, we're going to start with a list of supplies that you're going to need to do this. You're going to need a screwdriver, a set of channel lock pliers, safety gloves and glasses, BioGuard Strip Quick, one to two quarts depending on how dirty your filters are, new tank and manifold O-rings, a hose with a pressure nozzle. First steps, we're going to turn off our pump, close all the needed valves, and open the filter drain plug. Preferably when you go to turn off your pump, you're going to want to turn it off at the breaker box, which would be something that would look like this. This way we can make sure the pump doesn't turn on accidentally. Or you can use the time clock switch here, or if you have a control panel, you can turn it into service mode and then turn it off at the filter pump button, making sure that the light is off. Okay, here I'm turning off our pump, and I'm going to be going over to be shutting all the valves coming in and out of the pad. We want to shut our suction valves, such as skimmers and drains, and also shut our return valves. Now when using Jandy valves, remember that they work the opposite of most normal valves in that when the handle is in line with that pipe, that pipe is closed. Here you can see the diverter closing the port when the handle is in line with the pipe. Next we're going to open the drain plug on the filter. With our filter drain plug, we can use a screwdriver to easily open it. If yours isn't designed like this, you can use the channel lock pliers here to, to pull this plug out. Once the plug has been pulled, we see water starts to come out, and then you're going to open your air relief to facilitate faster water draining out of the tank. So as you can see here, I'm backing out the air relief. As I do that, the water flow will increase. Okay, now that we got the tank drain, our next step is going to be to actually remove the filter clamps and open the filter tank. Now when we go to do this, you're going to see that the filter actually has eight clamps, or seven clamps, depending on your filter, uh, that go around the perimeter. Um, as you can see here, each clamp has a handle in the center that's loosened to actually remove the clamp. And you can see here I'm loosening one, just took off, here's the second one. And when I take this off, you'll be able to see the actual clamping mechanism and how this works. There's a little metal T-tab there that slips into the slot molded on the filter tank. Now I fast forwarded here, that's going to be the last one I'm going to remove. Now when I did this, I put the drain plug back in the filter. So after we get this off, we're actually going to have to open the air relief. If you kept the drain plug out of the filter up to this point, you won't have to do what I'm doing right here. You can actually ignore this. Uh, however, if the drain plug is back in the filter, you'll have vacuum inside the filter tank. And in order to alleviate that vacuum, you'll need to allow air into the filter tank as you try to open it. So that's why I'm pulling the top off here, giving a chance to pull some air in. And once it's pulled its air in, I'm going to put that back on it. And to actually lift the filter tank off, you'll see that it has molded lift points all the way around the filter tank, which I'll be reaching for in a second. Now I'm going to lift on the point right there. You can see I just touched it. We're lifting up. Top half is off. I'm going to set it off to the side and get it out of the way. Now we're going to come over here. This is your tank O-ring. You're going to want to pull that off. Um, and actually you should spend some time inspecting it. If it looks like it's been deformed or crushed, you're probably going to want to replace it. Uh, once you actually go to put the filter tank together, if you have leaking at the halves, you're going to have to replace it. This is your automatic air relief assembly. It's located inside the filter. You're going to pull this out and set it off to the side. You can clean off any loose debris on it. Now we're actually just going to lift out the filter elements here. Lift them straight up. Careful, they will be heavy. They'll be filled with water and they're dirty. So once you get them up, set them off to the side. There's a small one. And now for the big heavy one. Again, you're going to lift it up. Just pull it off to the side. All right, now for the fun part. Next step, we're actually going to clean the cartridges. You're probably going to want to get them set up somewhere on uh, something raised that's going to keep them from getting your ground all wet and dirty. I usually use a pallet. Here you can see I'm looking at one of the dirty cartridges. You can see all the accumulated debris on the inside of it there, all that nice gunk. And when these are clean, they should actually be white. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to put on uh, safety equipment, if, especially if you're using the Strip Quick filter cleaner. Uh, stuff's relatively caustic to your skin if it sits on it for a while. So we're going to put on our gloves, 
safety glass, make sure we don't splash any of the cleaner in our eyes. I have my weight belt on because, again, I said these things are they're heavy to move around. What we're going to do first is you're going to pre-wash the cartridges to try and get off as much of the loose debris, large debris as possible, although our intention is not to actually clean it here, uh, just to get off surface debris. So you're going to want to make sure you get the outside and inside of both cartridges or whichever one you're going to decide to work on first. Um, you can see I'm doing that here as that debris is coming down. You can see some of the white starting to return. This is the product we like to use. It's called Strip Quick, and it's a fantastic filter cleaner. Uh, normally the way I put it on is we're going to lay the cartridge down and we're going to slowly add it over the exterior of the cartridge and on the inside of it. And then you're going to take the hose and actually work that material, that strip quick, across the material. And what will happen is it will foam up. We're going to give it a few minutes to sit and I just fast forwarded here. I let it sit for about 15 minutes and now I'm hosing the cartridges off. And you can see how white they're becoming as opposed to that gray they started off as. Uh, and then make sure you get the inside of the cartridge as well. You want to make sure you get all the strip quick off. If you see foam or uh, bubbles still coming off of it, you want to keep hosing it so you don't see that anymore. Um, and this is the air screen on the automatic air relief. And we want to make sure we get that clean so that air can purge through it the way it's supposed to. If it's dirty and covered in debris, uh, it won't do its job properly. And here you can see what a, a clean one looks like. I'm turning it around for you. All right, now for our last step, we're actually going to replace our O-rings if needed. I'm going to show you how to do that, and we're going to put back in our cartridges. Now what I'm doing here first is I made sure the track was clean and free of debris. And then maybe just take a paper towel or something and just make sure this O-ring track doesn't have any debris in it because otherwise it can make the O-ring leak. Uh, I'm putting on a new O-ring here. There's kind of a little bit of a trick to it. You want to set it down in the track on the one side and actually pull the o-ring and stretch it, don't roll it. If you try to roll it to put it on, it's going to pop off on you non-stop. Down here we have our manifold o-rings. Uh, these are actually what the cartridges sit on when we go to put it back. You can see there's two little tracks going around these nipples here. And you're going to set the o-rings into the tracks. There's the small one and then there's the large one. Okay. And when we go to set our cartridges in, that's actually going to be our target. You can see there's an arrow here on the cartridge I'm pointing to. That's going to line up and actually rest on the nipple inside the filter tank. Um, and it's not always perfect, but it gets you relatively close. So we're going to take that arrow, and we're going to try to line it up with that white manifold right there. And the big one will go on, the one closest to the inside of the filter tank. And when they drop in, you'll actually kind of feel it set into place. It will rock a little bit, but it should feel relatively secure. And we're going to set in the second one. Again, you have an arrow on this cartridge, which you're going to line up with the white inlet at the bottom. And this one actually gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, so I'm feeling around trying to feel where the nipple actually hits the cartridge, because the cartridge has a molded flange on the bottom. So when you hit it, you'll actually feel it drop into place. So I'm trying to find that. And when I find it, you'll actually see the cartridge drop right there. Now I got it. Okay. Now you can see it's relatively stable, but it does wobble just a little bit. Now you're going to, don't forget this, and you got to stick back in your automatic air relief. And there's a third very small hole down the middle here, which you can kind of see uh, when the camera angle catches it right. And we're going to stick this tube right down into there. It's just a pressure fit, so you're going to feel it go down, and you're just going to push it till it feels snug. And now we've reassembled our filter. So the next step, all we have to do now is we're just going to put the lid back on and reinstall the clamps. So this is the, the simple part of the whole operation. You're going to set your lid back on, making sure you're lining up the top portion of the clamp brace to the bottom portion. And make sure when you're orienting your tank that you have your pressure gauge so that's visible from where you want it to be. Because uh, this tank can be installed in any orientation you want, so to speak. Uh, now we're going to take our clamps and you're going to drop them back in. Now I would recommend you set all eight back on first. And you can see there's that little metal T that we are talking about that slips into the brace. And we're going to drop that right in. Drop that one right in, and we're going to work our way around. Now once you have all the clamps set on the filter tank, you're going to pick four clamps, and you're going to tighten them hand tight. Uh, you're going to make sure that you're working yourself in opposites from each tank or each clamp as you're tightening it. Once you have them all hand snug, you're going to go around then and make them hand tight. You don't have to over compress them, uh, just hand snug is good, but you do want to make sure that you go around the filter tank a few times because as you tighten one side, the other side tends to become loose. Uh, so just make sure that once you're done, when you go around, that all the clamp handles are hand tight and feel securely in place. And the last step here, um, I'm just putting in the drain plug, which is the simplest part. That just threads right in. I'm going to use my screwdriver 
because I have a slotted style plug in this filter. Now this is a convenient way to tighten this style plug. If you don't have a slotted style plug, you're going to have to use a wrench or a pair of channel locks to do that. Now, that concludes our video. Um, the last step that you're going to have to do is to reprime the system, put it back in operation. Uh, we have a video referencing priming your system that's also available, so I would push you towards that. And thank you for your time. And again, if you have any questions,